Today's story was written by a Reddit user, Zortesh. In horror movies, the Vexara were a howling, baying horde that would be cut down in huge numbers before eventually swarming the security personnel and tearing them apart with tooth and claw. As terrifying as this is, it pales in comparison to what actually happened. They howled and charged, yes, but they didn't get cut down in great numbers, and they did not resort to their teeth and claws, at least not until they had gunned down all of our station security and began hunting the civilians throughout the habitation ring. Which is why Horat found himself considering what could only be considered the worst idea in the long history of terrible ideas, as the screams of his friends and neighbours echoed about, past this forgotten supply room he hid in, he rationalised it, or tried to. Should he let out another monster to fight? Sitting below him was a stasis pod, a very old one that brought up visions of the start of many a horror movie far more brutal and terrifying than those featuring the Vexara. A creature that was unstoppable, a relentless and merciless killing machine, the sort of thing you could only stop with anti-armor weapons or an overloaded reactor. It was a human combat cyborg. He passed the grinder between his manipulator pods nervously, as the sounds of howling and screams got closer. Eventually, he heard yelling outside the door, and he thought a thought that many a human would also have been familiar with. Fuck it. The pod had a long, hard metal sheet welded over the controls, and an external power pack added to ensure it never turned off. But Horat was a very good engineer, and knew exactly where to cut to damage the stasis pod in just the right way to engage an emergency release. Even as the monsters outside cut through the sealed door, he cut free the monster inside. The pod started a series of off-ended sounding beeps, and a group of canine-like Vexara stepped in, immediately hitting Horat in his third body section with a stun dart. As his body fell and began wrapping around itself in paroxysms of pain, he cursed himself for hesitation. A particularly hulking and terrifying Vaxara loomed over him in his helpless state, red stained drool dripping down onto Horat's face from the monster's terrifying jaws. After some harsh chuckling, the beast spoke. Worry not, little caterpillar. We are well fed and you are a valuable slave. You will not be food. Today. It leaned closer, almost making her out vomit with the stink of raw meat on its breath. But why the stasis pod? What use could a popsicle poss- Then he was cut off by a sound of tearing metal from the pod, and fractions of a second later, by a huge gong-like ringing as the pod lid embedded itself in the ceiling. The Vexara spun in a blur, raising its data pistol, and was met by another blur, this one pale pink. There was a scream, and the sound of breaking bones as the human tore the gun from the monster's grip, complete with one of its fingers. The data fired a burst uselessly into the ceiling as he did so. In horror movies, the human cyborgs were slow-moving but unstoppable killing machines, however, the slow-moving part turned out to be horribly inaccurate. The human had broken both of the Vexara's arms and spun to face the dozen outs in the doorway before they even began to let out their howls of rage. He had gripped their leader by the neck and used it as a shield before they even took a step. The human fired six shots from the data and he probably would have done more if it had not jammed from being fired far faster than intended. Now, a data is a non-lethal weapon, except this human apparently only shot people in the eyes, which was most certainly lethal. Only two of the monsters managed to get off panicked automatic bursts at the human. The others hesitated to shoot their alpha. The human showed no hesitation. He threw aside the data with contempt, and crossed the space to the door in seconds. As quickly as the human crossed the room, 
He killed the half dozen Vaxara who were backing back out of the room even faster. It bludgeoned the first two to death with the body of its own leader, and then fists crushed skulls and shattered armour. The human kicks fully cut his well-deserved victims in half. The mess he made was a stark contrast to his first victims, slumped against the wall looking almost like they were taking a nap. These others, though they died just as quickly, were rendered into pieces. Blood painted the walls, floor and ceiling for dozens of feet in every direction, changing the colour of the illumination strips to an eerie red. Horat did vomit this time, even as he laughed. They too would now be trapped in a horror movie just like he was. The human turned, seemingly noticing Horat for the first time, and advanced on him. Horat assumed he would die here and now, but the human simply picked free the darts from Horat's body with his strangely pink and hairless fingers and crushed them one by one with contempt. It spoke, but his translator failed. Okay, so crackhead looking wolf men killing giant fluffy caterpillar people with the faces of hamsters. What the hell is going on and where am I? The human stared down at Horat as if it thought he would reply to its gibberish, but all Horat could do was make choking sounds. Well, fuck it. I guess I should probably deal with it. The people eating other people can't possibly be the good guys, so... With the second string of incomprehensible words, the human turned and walked out, stopping briefly to collect two darters from his victims, and then he was gone. There were more howls of Vexara spotting prey, which quickly turned into whines of pain and terror as they realised they were now the prey.